I'm Jay Ward. I'm Seth Rollins. And today we're doing how WWE should book. We're uh, based upon what culture's idea. We take an angle from now to the future and then challenge WWE to do it better. Because even though we're 16, 17 years old and still in high school, we're still, we still think we can do it better. So, yeah. I am here as the usual. I'm not wearing the vest again because, of course, I forgot it. And this is immediately after the John Cena one. Go check that one out. It's already uploaded, hopefully, by this point. And, of course, joining me because this is a second special in one day. We have Mr. Zeth Rollins. <laughs> awesome. You're happy to see him. So are we. So today we're going to take a look at a feature angle that has yet to be done, but probably will be happening very, very soon. The debut and the rise of the King of Strong Style, Shininsuke Nakamura. Hopefully we don't get copyrighted for his theme song earlier on in the video. Which led to a very funny me doing stuff to it. Anyways, so, let's talk about Shinsuke Nakamura. The King of Strong Style, who's probably one of the youngest IWGP Heavyweight Champions. I can't remember. I know he was really young when he won it, though. Uh, had dominated the New Japan Pro Wrestling roster for quite some time, leading in to his debut on NXT. He quickly rised with a phenomenal match against Sami Zayn at NXT TakeOver Dallas, which led to him fighting several other people, including Austin Aries, Spin Balor himself, and of course, this led to a rivalry with him and Samoa Joe, where he won the NXT Championship and then lost it to Samoa Joe in his first title defense, or maybe his second or third, I don't remember. He's currently in a rivalry against Bobby Roode. What does this mean? He's going to be called up to the main roster. I think he should. What? I, maybe. Yeah, I, I think catch so. Up, catch up on your history. Interesting. Anyways, this is how we would do the rise of the King of Strong Style, Shininsuke Nakamura. Okay, so let's look at it this way. So the Royal Rumble is coming up practically soon, and they need at least 30-odd participants. I say some of them are going to be NXT superstars look, making, looking to make a massive impact. Ask AJ Styles for how to make an awesome debut from the Rumble. He can tell you it's amazing what can happen when you enter the Royal Rumble. So he spent the entire year being one of the best hard workers in the WWE, winning the WWE title, beating John Cena clean, not once, not twice, but three times, I think. It's either that or he did it twice, but it's still impressive enough. Anyways, so Nakamura, where should he debut? Victoria Valesi to the main office, please. Victoria Valesi to the main office, please. So, at least at Royal Rumble, that's where, at least, I've watched where most NXT people seem to debut, because that's where, like, some of NXT people debuted to, to WWE. Here's the storyline for you, folks. So, at the Royal Rumble, yes, this is going to feel a little rushed, the club's Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows join forces with Mr. Finn Balor to win the Royal Rumble. Actually, no, wait, no, wait, no, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, wait, no. <laughs> eh, whatever. So they win the Royal Rumble. Finn Balor talks to Mick Foley and Stephanie McMahon, and because the club is now a thing, he wants his title match early. He says, look, I want to use my Royal Rumble title match opportunity earlier. He says, maybe perhaps sometime next week. They say, sure. They probably wouldn't, but I don't care. <laughs> so, next week on Raw, it's going to be Finn Balor versus Kevin Owens, two heels for the WWE Universal title. Finn Balor cheats to win the Universal title, which may make Kevin Owens more of a tweener baby face for a little bit before he can choose whatever the heck to do. I mean, they're already being cheered anyways, so I mean, yeah. you might as well just turn them heel uh, face this way. Uh, they have a rematch the following Raw, where Kevin Owens, once again, because of the club's interference, loses. Another superstar who was looking to make his debut at the Royal Rumble and was unsuccessful would be the King of Strong Style, Shinsuke Nakamura, and this is where it comes into play. Nakamura was, was ruined, was messed up, shall we say. His opportunity at the WrestleMania main event was costed. Who cost him that opportunity? The club. The club. The final two members of the Royal Rumble were Finn Balor and Shinsuke Nakamura. The club came into the ring, even though they had already been eliminated previously in the Royal Rumble match, and they 
eliminated the King of Strong Style, even though they were already eliminated. <clears throat> so Nakamura, after seeing that he, seeing this guy is the Universal Champion, thinks there is no number one contender, strolls into the office of Stephanie McMahon and McFoley with as much charisma as Mr. Per Charismatic can have, and asks for an opportunity at the Universal title. They say, you're not going to have one, at least not yet. You have to wait until WrestleMania. You have to go through the Elimination Chamber to prove yourself to be a number one contender. So it happens at the Elimination Chamber, but who shall Mr. Nakamura fight? I'll throw it over to you, Mr. Zeth Rollins, because you need to book this stuff too. I mean, that is actually a tough one. Who would actually... Who would you put in the Elimination Chamber with Mr. Shinsuke Nakamura? That is a tough one. There are a lot of people that could go up against him. There's a lot of people that could, and there's people do, that should. Yeah. I'm thinking Kevin Owens might be in there, because... Kevin Owens is a face, but I mean, I guess there you do need, like, six people, so, okay. So it's Shinsuke, Kevin Owens. Owens um, let me see. I'm bored, okay? You're gonna let me do my thing, and you're gonna pick these people already. You have all two people in this six person thing. I can't, Go. I can't figure out some of them. So, well, then think of the ones that you can. Should we just go back and forth on this then? So that way you, we only, you only have to pick two and I'll pick like three? Sure. Sort of ish? Yeah. So, I picked Shinsuke because, well, the, he's the point of this video. You picked Kevin Owens. I'm gonna say Seth Rollins because, you know, if Nakamura could prove himself against some of Raw's biggest and best competitors that will that would certainly put him in line for an opportunity the WWE Universal Championship. You go next. Hmm. Would, so, so, let me see. They're just coming off the top of my head. I'm Chris Jericho? Yeah, maybe. maybe. I'm cool, so that's what? So, so Nakamura, that's, uh, Owens, I said Rollins, and you said uh, Chris Jericho. That, that's it's an iffy one, one, but I'm going to go with Braun Strowman. I, I was going to go with that, but... I know, I heard. Like, as, I was, as, think, as, as I was humming a wrestler's song that you could have and or should have picked and probably should be the last person, uh, I, yeah, I heard you mentioning stuff like that. I was, I was thinking about that Braun Strowman, honestly, because... And who do you think the last person should be? Huh. Yeah. I was literally just humming a really good option. You realize I... <laughs> Uh, Sammy Zayn. There you much. go. Awesome. There you go. That, okay. Those two, Ron Showman and Sammy Zayn, can continue their rivalry in this uh, elimination chamber. 
and Nakamura can sort of team with Zayn, stuff like that, fun stuff. Anyways, where are we? Oh, geez, okay, this is like 10 minutes already. Holy shoot, I'm surprised. Okay, so we got that Elimination Chamber, and it's pretty obvious. We, I think we both agree on this one. Nakamura wins. Yeah, pretty much. Now, this is where we get fun, and this is where I sort of get out of my territory thing, because I don't know this stuff as well as maybe you guys do. So, again, hit us up in the comment section if you know more about this stuff than I do, which you probably do. So, we are going to try to use some past history. We're going to try to use the past and in New Japan. Basically, the Bullet Club, which is what the club is based off of, is was originally created by Finn Balor, which is why when it was taken over by AJ Styles, that's why the club was with AJ and all that fun stuff. Anyways, so, basically, if at any point Nakamura and the Bullet Club had a cross-in, maybe, right, because... Basically, the Bullet Club is being like the NWO and was terrorizing everything in New Japan. So, we go for a similar angle here. Na Nakamura, in a promo, says in, in the way only Nakamura can, you invaded New Japan Pro Wrestling. You tried to take that over, and now you're trying to do that here. Well, guess what? I am the motherfudging king of strong style. He probably wouldn't say that, but I am the king of strong style, and guess what? I am not letting you take over this company too. Dang it. So, this leads to the intense rivalry building and culminating all at WrestleMania. Whereas I think he and I both agree, Nakamura wins here, becoming the Universal Champion. And then we'd probably go on to have some phenomenal feuds with, let me see. He can beat the heck out of Roman Reigns. He could beat him up, that'd be fun. Uh, he could go for that rematch with Brock Lesnar from New Japan Pro Wrestling for the IWGP Heavyweight Champion. That would be another amazing one. Uh, he could have matches with John Cena, Randy Orton, and the list goes on and on. The King of Strong Style is so popular and known so well across the world, except for this guy, that, honestly, any match that he has in his opening few months is going to be a dream match and a half. That's going to be fun. So, as far as I'm concerned, we're pro my time's almost up, but you know what? We got these two booking videos out today. I don't know when they're going to come out, so whenever they come out, they're going to come out. It's cool. It's fun. Don't worry. We're going to just be happy and have just a lot of fun. By the way, for those of you who are wondering where the J Critic is and why he's only gotten one review out in 2017, it's because currently uh, he's going into production relatively soon. He's going to go into production for Assassin's Creed Lineage. Oh, such a fun review. What can you tell us about Assassin's Creed Lineage? So basically, it will have me and and Jay Crick. Jay Crick's going to be like the... Don't, don't, don't. Just, just don't, don't. Don't do that. But yes. Zeth Rollins will be playing the villain, and of course, Jay Critic will be doing a lot of fun stuff. By the way, for those of you who are wondering, this is going to be my first attempt. This is going to be me as sort of Jay Critic. I, I control people, sort of ish. Um, basically, this is going to be Jay Critic's first movie uh, slash review. This is going to be the first time we have a story going alongside an actual review. So, if you guys hit that like button, thumbs up, give us positive comments if you guys really like the idea of having a side story plot go on while we uh, review a movie, let us know and the more you let us know and the more positive feedback you give us, the more likely I am to consider doing them for more of my movie reviews. But if we get nothing, like I usually get for most of my stuff, well then it's probably going to be like a two a, a, a twice, a two thing and then it's done for now, I don't know. I mean, I am trying to expand my channel to be better than this one. It is my goal to be an individual star, and then maybe I'll return to where I became known and legendary, or maybe not. I don't know. But yeah, I want to put a lot of time into my J.A. Ward channel, which again, links should be not only in the description bef below, but I'm tagging it all over here, up there, somewhere, anywhere, because yeah, I would like, I would like you guys to come subscribe to me. This guy's got a YouTube channel, but he hasn't made any videos yet. So, when he starts making videos on a more consistent basis, 
subscribe to him too. But for now, you might not because there's only four videos. Two of them are themes. One of them features me. Again, YouTube channel stuff. It would be nice. Papa di tapa do papa i papo. I don't know. How, how do you want to end this? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, really I just. Don't know. Can we just like. Can we just say bye, everybody, and just walk off screen? Sure. Should that just be like a thing? Yeah. Okay, well. Papa di papa do papa ga ga si tapa do da da pa do. Boop boop.